Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Wednesday, and all of our guests today are brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. We're joined now by Kevin Epp from Titan Sports Management, hockey player uh, agent among his clients, Jake Vertanen, uh, Dylan Gunther, and Oliver Ekman Larson, uh, bought out last Friday by the Vancouver Canucks. Kevin, thanks for doing this, sir. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing today? Very Good. well, very well. Uh, I know it's a busy yeah. time. We, we thank you for uh, joining us. Hey, what was your reaction uh, to the Canucks last week buying out your client, Oliver Ekman Larson? Uh, I mean, I think surprised. I mean, there's been lots of talk in the marketplace for the season, you know, speculation on people's parts, but, you know, everything we had been talking about with management and with ownership uh, was kind of, you know, they weren't in a position to buy them out, but I guess they uh, they made the tough decision to do that uh, last Friday and move forward. So, what do you think changed, Kevin? I don't know. Actually, it's a good question. I, I don't know what had changed really. I feel like they were in such a cap predicament, and I think they had no no room to move on anything. And I guess. I must be that they couldn't have made a trade to move any salaries or contracts out on on other players, and and I guess they wanted to have some flexibility and freedom going into this year's free agency. So um, yeah, that's the only thing I I guess I think must have happened on their end. Anybody who makes it to the NHL is is a proud a person. We talked about your reaction. What was Oliver's reaction? Yeah, I think he was surprised as well. I mean, he had meetings with management ownership uh, prior to heading back to Sweden for the off season and was led to believe that uh, he was going to be a Vancouver Canuck for the upcoming season. And I think uh, from that standpoint, it kind of surprised him. But uh, I guess in the hockey world and professional sports, things things happen quickly and teams move accordingly. And I think that's kind of what happened in this case. Kevin, I'm not sure how it works, but have you had any uh, bites yet when it comes to OEL? Do you expect him to resurrect his career? Yeah, I mean, that's the plan here. We've had a number of calls, actually. We've uh, been in discussions with at least 10 teams right now. So we're going to continue to um, meet with, talk to teams, try to find the right fit. You know, I think uh, it's been a tough 13-year professional career for him, you know, playing in Arizona for those number of years and, the last few years in Vancouver haven't been ideal, you know, from yep. coaches and managers and people. There hasn't been a, a consistency, you know, in in where he's going to the workplace. So I, I think now it, a, it gives him the opportunity to be a, a free agent and um, see see what the market bears and see where he can go and um, hopefully uh, pick the right place to uh, for sure resurrect a career. Kevin, uh, as an agent, uh, what are you looking for for OEL when it comes to a new team? I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but wh- when you sit down with your client, what are you looking for in his new home? I think for every player it's different, right? I mean, typically there's, you know, the main the main things you're going to want to be, you know, on a competitive team that has a chance to win. You know, what your role is going to be on that team, how you're going to play, and how they're going to use you and utilize you and, and where you're going to fit within the roster. And, and then there's the lifestyle and family component, you know, with, with the family, where do you want to live, where do you want to be? And then obviously contractually, you know, what's uh, also important is salary, you know, what kind of term you get on a contract, what kind of compensation for each season. So I think, you know, all those factors play into it and, some are weighted more heavily than others, and and uh, we'll we'll just have to see what uh, the market brings for him. Kevin, ten teams—that's a good number. Are, are you happy with you know the the response so far for uh, you know teams that are looking into getting OEL? Yeah, no, we're real happy. I mean, immediately, you know, and, and that teams reaching out to us. That's not even calling teams, so it's kind of nice that uh, he still highly regarded in the hockey world and I think a lot of teams that are contending teams are interested and you know I think that's what makes it uh important that you know even for him and his confidence it's like you know 
these are the teams calling right away, wanting his services. It's kind of, you know, all right, I am a good player and I can go help a team win and hopefully, you know, ultimately win a Stanley Cup. That's, that's the goal here. Hey, Kevin, his uh, injury at the Worlds um, is well documented. How much did that have an effect, an adverse effect on what he was up to last year? Well, I think for any player to have an off season where they don't get to train and prepare, I mean, it's days, you know, it, it's years ago when players came to camp out of shape and got into camp in shape. You know, players are training 12 months of the year. So if you're off in the most crucial time, and you're you're aging too. You need to stay up with the young guys, and I think by having a whole off season missed of training and working out and not being able to be on it, I think that that did factor into having a slow start and not having the best season as he would like. You know. Hey Kevin, uh, you talked about uh, the Canuck organization when Oliver was a part of it, and three head coaches, uh, a couple of uh, GMs. Do you feel he was treated fairly by the Vancouver organization? I think it was a difficult time for the organization. You know, I mean, any time you make a, a blockbuster trade like they made to bring him in, and you know the expectations were high when he got here for not only him but the team. You know, one year prior they were in the Western Conference Finals finals and they had they do have good players and i think expectations were high and i think you know it was difficult to when the people that bring you in are all gone there's nobody here saying this is the guy we wanted or traded for obviously ownership had to sign off on it but they're being led by the management team so uh, i don't think it was to anyone's fault i think it just was a circumstance that happened you know you guys bring guys in it's probably no different than you guys at work when management or ownership above you guys changes and you sign a contract to work work for a certain network the new guys come in may or may not like you or want your services or they like somebody else better or they have loyalty to someone else or they want someone else and they're trying to make it work but ultimately you know how it goes at the end right Kevin, do you know something that we don't know? Are you trying to tell us we're out of work? I don't know. I mean, I'm just wondering how how you guys started the Dolly and Donnie show. Hey, Didn't we've been fired 500 times, Kevin, in the last five oh. years. Well, there you go. That's what happens, right? Even, even to the uh, legends of the lower mainland like you guys, right? <laughs> Hey, well, last time you were on, uh, you talked about the Vancouver media and how it makes life it can make life difficult for some players. Uh, where that was a while ago. Where are you at with that now? Well, I mean, I don't think things change. I mean, it's it's like the world we live in, right? Um, negative media still sells, right? That's what people want to hear. They want to hear those things. They, you know, it's no different than. In the U.S., or we're talking about presidential elections, I mean, media is a huge part of it. And I think in Canada, it's so important because everybody in Canada is a hockey fan, no matter where you come from. It's part of our culture, right? So every day, hockey's talked about, and that's why we have listeners, that's why we have these shows. And I think it, it is really important. I think it's, it's tough, though, because these markets really, you know, I mean, they keep talking about the Canadian markets, uh, not having an NH or not winning a Stanley Cup mm-hmm. in an NHL market in Canada for what thirty years now, like it was, it was well known on TSN, Sportsnet, everywhere that no one's won in Canada. I mean, I think it's difficult, right? It's a real difficult place to play. Sometimes I think when things are going great, it it couldn't be a better place, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's not always going great, right? So you know, you kind of need to support, and I think people do support it because they come out and watch and they're passionate about it, but I think it's easy to turn on your team or turn on management's decision or coach's decision or how a player plays, and I think it it factors into sometimes performance, for sure. Uh, Kevin, we see that uh, Jake Vertanen side a couple of weeks ago in Europe again. He's just plugging away, keep going year by year, Kev? Yeah, he's over in Germany now, and uh, he, he got on with the team there pre playoffs, and kind of he'd done a two year deal. I don't know uh, how it got just announced last week, but he did a two year contract at the time, and um, you know, yeah, that's where he's going to play and see how it goes, and and uh, just go from there for sure. The Fishtown Penguins, I believe, the team, and and very quickly, Kevin, can can you see him getting back into the National Hockey League one day? 
you know, it's a long ways away for sure. I mean, I think he's got to get his game to where he wants and, and climb the ladders in Europe. And, you know, it just depends how long that takes from his age. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's possible you've seen guys come back from Europe, you know, um, yeah, obviously different situations where, you know, guys like Krejci come back and they have an unbelievable season. But, you know, I think you can go to Europe and as long as you keep improving and get your game better, I mean, there's always a chance. I mean, at some point you age out where you're just too old and and you're not ready to play at this level. So, But uh, we'll see. He's, he's still a young man, so. Well, uh, well, thanks for this, uh, Kevin, and, and for the next 24 hours, Rick and I will be waiting a call for the people uh, from a call, uh, the, the, the people uh, in charge of check. Yeah. So uh, th- thanks yeah. for that. But in all seriousness, thanks for this, Kevin. Keep giving you a heads up always, guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate thanks. it. Have a good day. You okay, guys. Thanks. Uh, you too. Uh, Ke- Kevin at